and data is stolen. Why is it so hard? What if the data itself was intelligent enough to determine that there's a problem and it would protect itself, not based on the credentials that were, that were presented, but the context and the content that's saved inside of the uh, storage itself? Let me show you what I mean. Here we have a document that contains personal data. Personal identifiable data, credit card numbers, social security numbers, all types of, you know, the worst nightmare for, a, uh, for an IT administrator. And this document is on Nick's desktop. Now Nick can share this with whoever he likes. He can post it on the internet. He can do whatever he thinks is the right thing. But we're the owners of the data. So imagine a world where, where actually the storage is intelligent enough to determine what's the right thing to do with the data. So let me show you what that means. Here we have the same personal data being copied into a thin air volume and accessed. You'll notice the credit card numbers have been automatically redacted in real time based on the, based on the policy of the organization. The storage understands that based on where the user is and the content that's actually on the storage, that this user is not authorized to get that content and it redacts it based on my corporate policy. That's not magic. That's thin air. Now you also notice something else. You'll notice uh, Tony's super secret plan. Go ahead and access it. I don't know how he how he saw that, but thin air automatically recognized that this content should not be accessed by Nick. It's only it should only be accessed by my inner circle, and it decided to re to remove the read access to that document automatically. So this can work, of course. So right now we're demonstrating a desktop. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Message from the error. Dash data accessed on volume demo three. Protect secrets. Press one to approve. Press two to deny. So what that error just did is recognize that this content may possibly be accessed. It just called me. Let me give access. That's how thin air works. So let me show you. No, I didn't. I, 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 Sorry, I So let me show you how easy thin air is to, to configure. So here we have the policy interface. So if you can show the policies, and I'll approve that so that you guys can see that. I just approved it. So what we see here is the policy interface. So me as an organization, I can go in and determine how I want my data to be accessed, from where I'd like the data to be accessed from, under what conditions. This is all done through a web-based interface. So here, if we wanted to, you know, do anything that I, that I desire. Below that, we have the extensions interface. Now what that is, is the ability to actually deploy a script that is run in the operating system of the device in real time. <coughs> so what, when I said earlier it was programmable, you literally can write a script that changes the behavior of the file system in real time. This has never been done before. That's the name. Okay. Any questions? <coughs> are you a storage company or a security company? So since we are virtual storage, we can actually be used for both. The way that air works is that since you know we virtualize the existing the, the volume that you deploy the software to, and because of that, we can do scale-out storage. We can also do a very fine-grained ability in terms of control. So this is all built into thin air. I would love to hear more about the types of customers that you're targeting, and sure. if you talk to anybody and, and what their initial reactions. Been. Yeah. So, so if you think about, you know, anyone that has so traditional, you know, storage. Well, traditional companies have been. If you take it and you save inside of thin air, we give you the ability to fully control it. So government, healthcare, uh, you know. Anyone that has data that they'd like to control, any, literally every small business and enterprise company that exists today that has credit card information, all of that is completely controllable through thin air. Okay, so small businesses or enterprises. That is correct. Have you, um, have you have a sense of where you would start and what your pricing points would be? Um, so we're working with, our, with a, a closed beta today. Uh, we're not going to disclose pricing at, at this moment, um, but we do have some, some things in mind. And as, and as that data becomes available, we'll, we'll uh, release it to the public. Okay. 
Sounds like a pretty novel uh, approach to, to data production in, in general, so congrats. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the software footprint and, and sort of where this can work? Is this operating system and, and mobile device agnostic? Does it, does it work everywhere? Sure. Yeah, so we work across every single platform that, it, that, uh, that has a file system interface. So Linux, FreeBSD, Windows, Mac, everything except for iOS because you can't actually get into the operating system. We are a kernel level device. So we, we insert ourselves into the kernel. We have a virtual machine that executes instructions in real time that those instructions can give you as an administrator the ability to, for instance, redact data as it's being accessed or you know, determine the physical location of the device and decide to give you access to the content or not. Or even do, like I said earlier, two-factor authentication where it calls my phone. This is all possible through simple scripts deployed through thin air in the web-based interface. Can you describe your market? Who would be the current competitors? Who do you see? You said there's no innovators in this space. That sure. Was, I get nervous when I hear that. Well, no. So there's definitely so there's definitely companies that provide data protection. So that's not. I mean, that's an industry where you see you know a ton of you know successful companies. What we are doing is that we're taking this very complicated subject and we're making it super simple for anyone to deploy within 30 seconds anywhere in the world. So this is take you know, and it gives you a level of custom of custom of uh, custom of, to, it gives you the ability to customize things in a way that traditionally hasn't been available. Who would be in the legacy, the current world today? Uh, so, there, like I said earlier, there's there's a ton of existing players. Um, you know, our our goal is to augment your existing storage system. So, you know, we're, we're not looking to replace like EMCs, the NetApps, or anything like that, or even some of the existing other players. We're looking to make your storage better. So, you deploy it on. You know, we're, we're end to end security. We're the last. We secure the last mile, which is something no one else does today. So you can deploy it on top of your existing storage. That is exactly right. You, this is not a rip out and replace scenario. This is deploy thin air and upgrade your existing enterprise storage systems either on the desktop or in the or in the data center as well. So you can give your existing legacy equipment these new capabilities with this. That's exactly right. Our goal is to make things better. And so and so, how do you provision your service? So you have uh, a customer who wants to sign up for it. How, how long does it take to? 30 seconds, literally. It's a software install. You go to the website, you download the software, you install it, you go to the, you know, and then you literally provision everything through the web-based interface. And I don't know if we can jump, to, I don't know if you can see that at all. Yes, we're out of time. Oh, we're out of time. Maybe not. I guess we can do it. All right. Head of buttons in, in seconds, Helen. Thank you very much. And Aaron. Please welcome.